Hey, Mark, fake banter for the intro. That's all I know how to do. Great. Good to be here. Welcome to Tuesdays with... Stories. Hit her in the face with a surfboard. And then the duck fell out of his bag. <laughs> Surf's up. And she didn't even flush. Knock, knock. Who's there? Mark Norman and Joe List. Yeah! This is Tuesdays with Stories, everybody. No, oh, that's terrible. This is supposed to be cheesy. My radio is spitting at me. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Tuesdays with Stories. I'm Joe List. That's Mark Norman here. And uh, together we are gay. Yes, lovers. Gay lovers. You got that right. Lovers is always was always a big one when they go, this is my lover. You're like, whoa, Jesus. Oh, that means it's torrid, I think. What is torrid? Like A uh, torrid love affair. Internet? I don't know. I don't know torrid. what torrid means, but you always hear torrid. Torrid love affair? Is that a quarterback? Who's yeah. torrid? You've not heard torrid love affair. You only hear torrid with love affair. That's true. You don't hear with anything else. Yeah, torrid fart, torrid Anal. retard. Yeah. <laughs> so what is torrid then? I think it's wild. It's torrid. We got to throw that in more. I'll look it up. Where's uh, torrid? I really miss up. Shelby. I'll be the Do you? Guy. All right. Well, I, I miss somebody looking things up. I mean, sure. Scares me. Oh, he's a scorner. Torrid. Oh, yeah, here it is. Torrid. T O R R I D. Wait, that's, that's a it. fashion. Uh-oh. Wait, maybe not. Mm. That's a fashion line. I torrid the hymen. Tor- I'm going to type in Torrid Love Affair. Let's see All what right. happens. I'm excited. Torrid Love Sick. Mm, maybe heard? that's like a thing you think. Oh, here it is. Oh, wait. Oh, here we go. I've heard Love Affair. There okay. we go. Torrid. If you're having a torrid romance, that means it's steamy and emotionally charged. Oh! It also describes something that's very energetic or something like you could have a torrid act. Oh, like Sebastian Maniscalco is torrid. He's torrid. Interesting. Uh, uh, <laughs> I'm kidding. He's funny. Now, it's something that is extreme emotional charge, which is why people often apply torrid to love affairs. There it is, vocabulary.com. All right, let's throw it in the mix. That should be a regular word. It's a good word. Yeah, so torrid, here's the actual definition. A tor- if you're having a torrid romance, it means steaming, emotionally charged. Oh, this is the same website, I guess. Uh-huh. All right. All okay, right. so it's uh, officially adjective, emotionally charged and vigorously energetic. Vigorously. Quote, torrid jazz bands, a torrid dance, hot trumpets and torrid rhythms. So gay porn is torrid. Um, it's pretty sweaty and thunderous. Well, not necessarily. I mean, you could have a a, a timid, like a, a lame gay porn. I don't know if that exists. Well, I'm saying if you and I were just kissing and tweaking nipples with, you know, sure, uh, Chris core. Christopherson on in the background, it might not be torrid. Well, it sounds like a great night, is what it is. It sounds S- like a Tuesday. Synonyms: extremely hot. <laughs> uh, there you go. All right, we got it. Torrid. All right. See, back was, I didn't like your torrid tone right there. Well, get used to it. At, at my grandparents' house, they had the dictionary up on a podium, and it had a big light on it. And you, my mom would, I'd go, what's torrid? She would go, oh, I had to run over, nice. and I'd stand on a little stool and go, and that was back, that was Google. Boy, you had some torrid grandparents. Oh, they were cunts. Uh, <laughs> another uh, synonym. Synonym's fun to say, isn't it? Synonym. Yeah, cinnamon roll. Also, simile. Yeah, that's not bad. It's not as fun as synonym, though. No, no, no. Synonym. Um, boy, speaking of cinnamon rolls, this sugar addiction is no joke. Woo-wee. So I decided, I'm like, what's a w- I was talking to Vecchione about this keto business. You can't just stay in ketosis. you got to mm. break it. So I want to do a bit about this. People are like talking about keto. They're like, yeah, you can't shit. Like one side effect is you'll be constipated for a couple of weeks. Sure. And then they're like, you better eat carbs before you go for a run or really work out, though, because you feel a little depleted. I'm mm. like, are you sure this is healthy? Right. You can't shit and you feel weak? That's I mean, that doesn't seem very healthy. Sounds awful. Yeah. It sounds like a side effect of a of a disease. Yeah, exactly. Ketosis sounds like a disease. It does. I'm in ketosis. Yes. It sounds like like uh, Stan Lee shit. Like, oh no, ketosis got over and now he's the Incredible Hulk. That's you a know? good point. Yeah, he's just throwing, you know, grilled chicken at Spider-Man. <laughs> or whatever you eat on keto. Or fat shit. You fat c- bombs. You can't have sugar and you can't have dairy? I don't even know well, what Well, dairy has is. sugar. In uh, it. Well, you can have cheese. So keto is all low, car- like fifth. I guess fifty to one hundred and fifty carbs is considered low. But uh, keto, I think you want to be from like zero to fifty, and you want to get your carbs from your veggies. 
Oh. Like broccoli, veggies have carbs. Is that right? But there's like small amounts or whatever. You know, uh, broccoli contains small amounts of cyanide. No kidding. I don't know what cyanide is exactly. Can you give me a synonym for cyanide? Uh, poison? Oh, love that band. You. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah cyanide's a the thing they that fucking... Was a, that was a cheap trick. Murder you with. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It'll ruin you, but uh, it has just a little... It's almost like uh, what's that stuff called with the with the booze? You pour it in. Trick to uh, fed. No, you pour it in uh, when you hangover. Oh, oh uh, Tylenol. On. Gingers. Ginger. No. Bitters. 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 Yes. Want to get gingers? Yeah, gingers. Well, they're fun. Yeah, she was uh, in uh, Gilligan's Island. Oh yeah. Ginger. And then there's Ginger Baker, who who's, died recently. Who's that? He was the drummer in uh, Cream. Ooh, I've had that in my pants. Yeah, I've had a drummer in my pants. I don't know if that made sense. <laughs> I had a little drummer boy once. <laughs> oh, well, you got to fuck life. kids, you know? Yeah. <laughs> well, let me ask you, I mean, uh, YouTuber, I, I don't read the comments anymore because they're hurtful, but I went to get a haircut. This is what I, I had a 1230. You look good. Thank you. I had a 12, you got one too? Nah. I Shower. had a 1230 meeting. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, golden. So it takes about a half hour to get to said meeting. I'm in Astoria, so at 11:37, I go. I'm going to go to my barber shop on Broadway in Astoria, get a quick haircut, jump on the train, still make my meeting. And I'm working on this thing where I keep all my life. I'm getting places way too early because of anxiety. Mm, I've noticed. I'm so afraid to be late, and I end up just walking around the block. I always text you. I'm like, I'm here 90 minutes early if you want to do something. Right, right. And so I'm. That's like anxiety. So I'm trying to be like. Uh, more pragmatic about travel and be like, you don't have to be everywhere. Yes. Now, some places it helps. Going to the airport, I'm like, I'm getting right, there early because right. I'm not valuing my time elsewhere, blah, blah, blah. So I'm like, let me work on this, about leaving a little later so I'm not spending all this time walking around, especially in the winter. Uh-huh. So I leave early, and as I'm getting there, I'm like, I need there to be no line at the barbershop. If there's any line, oh, it's going to fuck me. I've been there. Because I'll go from being super early to now late. Yes. So I get there, and there's like nine guys. They're piled on top of each ah. other. Because everyone wants their Thanksgiving haircut. Ah, everyone's holiday gonna, hair. they got to go see their mother. And their mother's going to go, what's with the hair, you fucking loser? Right, right. So And haircut, you can't do alone. It'd be nice if you could cut your own hair. That could be That could be a new invention. Yeah, I think some people do do it. Do-do. But it comes out like do-do. It's one of the few homemade things that's bad. You know, usually homemade is good. Oh, he's, he's got a homemade ziti. Oh, yeah. You know, homemade gravy. You go, ooh, homemade. Yeah, no one wants a family recipe haircut. Exactly, exactly, <laughs> I mean, yeah. Well, that's like, I was talking about this, too. With bar- I tried to do this as a bit. It never worked. Uh, but the barber, sometimes it's hard to do in a hurry because the barber will start watching TV. Ah, uh, the worst. It's the only, this never worked as a bit, but maybe it'll work here. It's the only like profession you pay someone and they stop to watch the two. Like you're never like, uh-huh. all right, you have a spot on your lungs. Oh, check out this scene. It's right. fucking Henry Hill, <laughs> right, whatever. Right. Trump's on. Like he's just sitting there watching the television for like nine minutes. I'm like, hey, what the fuck? Yeah, yeah, brutal. They take their time and they talk to the other guy and they go, how are you? And then you say something interesting. They go, get out of here. You're like, no, no, get back with the combing. I never want to talk. I just want to go, don't talk. Just cut the hair. I love the Armenian guy because he speaks no English. He speaks no English, and he invites you up to her room. Uh, Anyways. I love so, cake. So I go uh, I go in there. I go, I can't do it. And now I'm with Sarah. She's on the way to the gym, mm. and I just have a meltdown. This is where I got, she's like, what's wrong with you? I'm like, fuck, there's a long line. Now I just got to go. I could have been at home for another 20 minutes. Exactly. Now I'm just going to get to the meeting a half hour early, and fuck me. So I'm like, whatever, I'll just go. I get on the train. I take my time. I get off. And then I'm like, maybe there's a barbershop near the meeting. Ah. So I give it a clam. Google, and there's a barbershop. So I go, all right. So I go upstairs. Now I'm in Manhattan. Now, for those, most people who don't live in New York, if they're listening to the show, the difference between a Queens haircut and a Manhattan haircut, very pricey, but I go, it'll be a little more expensive, whatever's clever, Trevor. It's like going from a, a bus station to an airport prices. Exactly. So the meeting's 1230. It's like 12.07. Okay, pretty good so, window. And the meeting is a block away. All one, right. One block on the other side. So you got to kind of go up and around. But three minutes, mm. five minutes. Well, I get in there, and it's a lady, and she doesn't speak English. So I just go, just to trim. It takes five minutes before the haircut starts. Ah, you're counting those minutes. She's like, same style? I'm like, yeah, yeah, trim. Trim. Trim it up. And she's like, you pull it back? And I'm like, exactly like it is now. Except shorter. There you go. I don't, there's no nothing. She's like number four. I don't know the. I never knew the numbers because I never had a whiffle or anything. 
A wiffle? She's like a... Yeah, oh yeah, we talked about this before. You guys didn't use Wiffle term. I don't know Wiff. Wiffle was just like a clean shave head. That's what like Nate Bargatze had when he was unsuccessful. Oh yeah, those are bad. A Wiffle. Bad Wiff. <laughs> hey, no Wiffle. Well, I never had a Wiffle. I had a lot of waffles, no Wiffles, but sure. Uh, weebles wobble if they don't fall down. But so I go. I don't know the number. Just trim it up, you fucking cunt. I got yes. a meeting to get to. Come Step on, on it. Trim, Gash. So finally she starts. She puts on the clipper. She uses a clipper. Then she. It's one of these places. It's Good Manhattan. Team. So they gotta do all the business. Oh, yeah. They want to clip you and powder you and shave you. And then she does my eyebrows. And there's a clock right ahead of me, and I'm just watching it tick away. Now you know me and being late. It makes me sick to my stomach. I just <laughs> want to throw up. I want to kill myself. Yep. And so now it's just past. And now you're just like whatever. So they want me to do your eyebrows. I'm like, do my fucking pubes because I'm missing the goddamn meeting anyways. You might as well turn this into the meeting. Just talk to her. Yeah, maybe I should do that. My rock bottom was when I blew that kid on the playground or whatever. Yeah, the whole thing. So yeah. Shaved my eyebrows and I can feel they feel short. Yeah, they look good. I got a whiffle eyebrow. I don't mind the eyebrow. It's a little much. It looks good because I can't imagine how much longer it was before. It was wild. Like the ends of them are gone. A little bit, I yeah. I got no brow on the end here, folks. If you yeah. take a look on the YouTube. The picture. Looks like your eyebrows are, are going into the army. I don't. Yeah, that's what I feel. I feel like Gomer Pyle here. Mm-hmm. Uh, but anyway, so it finishes. I got to leave. And then I feel guilty about this. I got I to gotta put it out there. It costs 36 bucks. Yeah! Oh. My haircut in Queens is 16, so it was more than double the haircut. Wow, you went from teenager to to you. Brutal. Teenager Six, to adult. $20 more, and so I got to pay with a credit card because I don't have the cash. So I pay with a credit card, and this big sign says, no tip on credit card. Cash only tips. Mm, smart. All I have is 20s, ah. and I'm late. So I don't have time to break the thing. So I just went, and I went, you know what? I'm paying $20 more. Hopefully yes. they pay her well. I'm not tipping. Wow. No tip. I could. I don't have time to make the change. It took way too long. She did a great job. But some of these things, you're like, I could have got this for 20 bucks less. Yeah. And that- normally I'd tip. If I had a five, I would have tipped. If I had singles, I would have tipped. But that's not on them. But I had all I had was 250 because I'm going to therapy. Uh-huh. That's my therapy money. And right. I don't want to crack into my therapy money. If I do that now, I got to go to the ATM. Right, right. Now my whole day is off kilter. And I got to hope that she gets a big chunk of that 36. Did you say, can you break a 20 there, Esperanza? Well, I didn't want, I didn't have time. And I All right. 50s and I just went, oh, right. Fuck me. And it was like a band I just ripped it off. So I feel guilty. I get it. But at the same time, they should feel guilty because a haircut shouldn't be 36 bucks. I'm sorry. I know the ladies pay four grand a haircut. And, I agree. But uh, it what is you silly. Do? And that's, it's a good looking snip. But uh, yeah, that's high. Not a bad snip. So I was 10 minutes late for the meeting. But then again, this is something I'm working on with anxiety and therapy. I was like, all right, no big deal. Yeah. I'm a little late. I'll join in. I'm still here. Whatever the fuck. Uh, Then I came here. Now I'm late getting here because I tried to eat a salad. And you can't eat a salad fast. No, you can't wolf a salad. You get the lettuces flipping and flopping, the ranch dressings in your eyebrow. It's It's, brutal. It's hard to break down. Like a piece of chicken, you can chew it three times and swallow it. But that lettuce, it just gets all folded up and stuck in your thing. And yep. So I'm late for this. I'm late for that. I got an expensive haircut, but uh, whatever. Happy in, to be here. In a few hours, it'll all be water under the anal, and you won't even think twice about it. But I get it. Well, one thing that's making me happy, I can tell you, these guys. Uh, oh, can what, I? Can I? Is that what it's called? I, I keep feeling like I'm saying it wrong. Can I, baby? Can I? C A N N A E Pro Gear. Can I? Pro Gear. Big fan. Well, they're the new sponsor, and we'd love for you to support our sponsors. And it's Christmas time. It's Christmas gift season. Yep. Now, these guys, a lot of these sponsors, they send you something to, to fuck around with, to play with, so we can talk about it. Test drive. A lot of it, I'm like, I don't even know what this is. I give it to Sarah, whatever. <laughs> Eero, I'm still clueless. Well, this thing I strapped... <laughs> I'm going to give it to Shelby as a Christmas gift. I gave it to my friend's mom, but she's loving it. Oh, okay. But uh, I strapped on this Can I uh, backpack. Oh, yeah. And I am you can. loving it. It's a beauty. I've had every kind of backpack there is. This backpack is serious, and it has. they have like military backpacks if you're a gun oh, guy. Oh, you got it. Anything Probably. you need. Not a fan of mine, but still, <laughs> you can uh, you can put your guns in there. This holiday <laughs> sale is on now. There's a holiday sale going on. Oh yeah. You're, use the code Tuesdays. You can get an additional fifteen percent off. I probably should read this from the top and not just.
just the bottom. Well, I'll handle the top. All right, you handle the top, but use the promo code Tuesdays, and uh, they're they're inspired by military. It's like military style backpacks. Wow, trusted by Secret Service. Oh my God! Well, it fits on perfect, and there's all kinds of pouches and stuff. And, oh yeah, uh, it's a killer backpack. I got it on right now. It's over here on the floor. Yes. Tell, tell them more what they wrote there. <laughs> That's just from my heart. Yes. That was a heart ad from the gut, the silent re. So uh, I want to say they, these guys were nice enough to give us one. Now, we fight over the duffel versus the roly. I feel like this is a good marriage. A night, oh, I love a good marriage. It's a perfect, I wish I had one. perfect mix of the two. You throw it on your back so you're carrying something, but it's lightweight, and you don't have to worry about it. Your hands are free. I love this thing. Uh, get Gear of this high quality normally costs an arm and a leg, but at Can I, you get the highest grade at a fraction of the price, folks. Look at this. It comes out of the military. Throw it in an aviator glasses, a Jeep Wrangler, and now you got a Phalanx duty pack. Duty That's, pack? I love it. Oh, my friend had a disease. That he had to wear a duty pack. Uh, oh, yeah. Not you. You got constipation. But the Can I Pro Gear.com. That's C A N N A E ProGear.com and use Tuesdays to get 15% off. You hear that, folks? After the bombs, there will only be you and Can I Pro Gear, the most durable backpack known to man. I can tell it's durable. I've only had it for a couple of days, but it, they can feel the durability. Durability. Yes. Not durability. Torrid. Adorable. Durable. Yes. Duracell. Ah. Yeah, go use the pro too. It's a, it's a great gift. Seriously, use the promo code Tuesdays. Get an additional fifteen percent off. And uh, happy Christmas. I think I list, I've started listening to podcasts recently, which just sounds weird. It's about I know. time. But um, there really is. It is great for Christmas gifts. Yes. Or not only like just listening to them. Like I'm on Bobby's podcast. We have our podcast. We get ads. You start hearing these ads, and you're like. That's a great Christmas gift. Of course. Like, I'm grateful I listen to podcasts just for the gift ideas. And you get the discount. It's great. Everybody wins. Hell yeah. Now, I know I already I already did a little business there with the haircut. I got a quick nugget. I want to get this nugget out because this is a very special episode Love of Tuesdays nugget. with Stories. The people know because they've seen the photo. Yeah. They've seen the photos of what went on this week. They know what was happening ah. last week. So the people are eager to hear. There's a lot of people hitting that. 30 second forward button. Oh, I hate the 30 second. We're, we're not these chumps who put the, uh, the the 18 ads up front either. No, we can't get ads. We stuck at reading them. But, That's uh, true. Have you noticed they changed it to 30 second forward, 15 second back? I didn't notice. It that. used to be 15 and 15. Is that right? So now to get the 15, you got to skip ahead 30 and then oh, back 15. Good eye there, Fatty. You got to do arithmetic. Yeah, weird. It's a little strange. Arithmetic. But uh, I guess somebody must have complained, I guess. Yeah, all right. Arrhythmia. Well, I got a few things, but I just, I'll just i give you this one thing that's kind of fun, but it's a nice little warm-up. Nugget, please. You know? Uh, yeah, here comes a Denver nugget. What's more of a D.C. nugget? Oh, all right. I've had those in my... It's a dingleberry, we call that. So this is one of the things that uh, sometimes I'll, I'll teach. Does it work out or does it not work out? Sometimes in life, oh. things work out, and sometimes they don't work out, but really they work out because you just get over it. And you die. So I'm going to. Uh, D- I went to two hockey games last week. Damn. Thursday, Islanders Penguins. We wanted to see Crosby, Veter, and I. We got hurt. Bing. About 500 people. Now it's his son, Sid. Ah. Uh, Sid and Bing. Sid and Bing. That sounds like a good uh, sex position. Or a radio team. That's what I was gonna go with. I switched to sex <laughs> the last second. It's probably better. Uh, radio team. I've done to death. Oh boy. But anyway, so we're gonna go. He got hurt. We went to the game, and then Veter. You can tell, like he once the. Crosby's out. Vito doesn't like to leave his house. No, no, he doesn't. He's got not. dogs and a wife and something. They look alike. But <laughs> <laughs> get Vito. He doesn't know how to use a podcast. Uh, um, but so I could tell. Like, he's like, "Are we still going to this thing?" I'm like, "Well, I'm going." He's like, "Oh yeah, me too." And you can tell he's just like, "Ah, jeez, I was hoping to get out <laughs> some numbers or whatever." Right, right. But, uh, I picture him with a little visor on. <laughs> I a crank. picture him with a visor. Oh yeah, he's got a pencil in his ear. The whole thing. He's a good advisor. But yes, um, yes. Great comic, by the way. He's got an album coming out, Vitor Las Vegas. It's, it'll be out in the spring. Make sure you have a lot of great shit coming out, by the way. Oh, my. Too much shit. It's a DC... Imp- uh, what do you call it? Huh? Wait. What did you just say? It's a DC... Peter. Well, shit. Oh. And I said... A Denver Nugget. It's a Nugget. We got a lot of Nuggets. A lot of Nuggets. Jessica Kershaw. I don't know how do you say her name. Kirsten. 
Kirsten? Yeah, no sh- no S. Some people say I mean, no Kershawn. H. Some people say Kirsten. Uh, Sometimes you hear Kirsten. Maybe it is Kirsten. Let's I, go Kirsten. Uh, it might be Kirsten. That well, sounds better. Jessica, it looks like Kirsten. Yes. Kirsten. Kirsten? I, I put a curse on you. Right. I'm Somebody did. My like, career stinks. <laughs> um, but the Stoner special comes out December 7th, and the Wolf special comes out December, December 10th. 10th. And then Vita will be out in the spring, and then I got something cooking up oh, my sleeve. Oh, all right, finally. And then Sam tapes on the second. It's a lot of jizz in this gumbo. It's a long December, and there's reason to believe maybe this year will be better than the last. Good band. Love the Counting Crows. Me too. Yeah, they're very good. Better than the Black Crows. But that I would agree. I don't care for Blacks. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Crows. Oh, Crows. Um, okay, so I gotta go to DC. I'm going to the hockey. We go to the hockey game. Vita and I have a great time. Look out for his album. He's hilarious. We go to the game. Nice game. Fun game. Whatever. Then Friday, I go down to DC. I got tickets for the Washington Capitals game Saturday. I want to go see Alexander Ovechkin, who's like one of the great players in history. Two bad team names, if you ask me. The Capitals and the Islanders. I like Islanders. Islanders isn't bad, but it's, it feels tropical, and now we're on ice. Well, an island could be cold. Iceland's an island. Ah, uh, Manhattan's an island. Oh, yeah, Staten Island. My dad's an island. Sure. Um, island's in the sun. Island's in the sun. Stream? Stream. stream. Oh, stream. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, streaming. And we closed the wedding with that. It was fun. Oh, yeah. You were in a blackout at that point. But, oh, uh, I was gone. <laughs> Still hung over from that one. <laughs> Didn't make any of the photos. Uh, uh, you're in a Photo. I made it in one. I was sleeping on a staircase. <laughs> it's a couple. Uh, what the hell is a basket case? Can I ask that? That's a crazy wacko. I, I know what a basket, basket case means, but oh. what's the uh, origin oh, story? I love that. Well, get on it, Twitter. What's his name? Oh, Tuesdays with facts. Faxy. God hates facts. <laughs> All right, but uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, like shit. That. I got to fast forward here. We're running out of time. Well, go back 15. All right, all right. So, uh... Uh, she said great. she was 30. Uh, <laughs> did that make sense? Epstein. Kind of I got it. All right, so we're going to the Capitals game. They're playing the Canucks, which is a slur, by the way. A little the bit. Vancouver Canucks. They don't mind, apparently. No, nah, they're cool. There's no, you know, New York Heebs. Nope. Well, there are. Well, there are. There's, not a team. There's plenty. <laughs> they don't wear a uniform. But uh, yeah, maybe they do. The Williamsburg ones do. They that's, got the doily there in the head. That's a good point. Uh, <laughs> so we go to the hockey game. So Sarah and I were going to the hockey game. I got tickets off StubHub. Now, when I can, I get physical tickets. I, like, I'm like, mail me the tickets because I like to collect them. They got a oh, photo yeah. on them. I hate the digital bullshit because there's the no ditch. physical memory. I'm with you. So I ordered the tickets back in fucking December of 06. Are you getting rates on this? I feel like you're, you're a StubHub cunt. You're all over. Like, you're, you're up the ass. You're a StubHub chub. Well, listen to this. So this is all StubHub, this whole story. All right. So I oh, I don't get any points, not no miles or anything. Gah. But so I get the tickets like three months ago. I got them on my fridge. Then I put them in my backpacks. I'm like, I don't want to forget them. So I've been carrying them around for months. Feeder's mm. like, you're crazy. You're going to lose your bag. I'm like, you're going to lose your virginity if you get lucky. Finally. T.I. Check the high. So I bring the tickets. It's a Saturday afternoon. Sarah and I were running a road race on Thanksgiving. So we wake up Saturday morning. First thing, we go for a run along like the wow. National Mall. Wow. Around the mine. We're like Forrest and Jenny out here. It's quite a day. Yeah, AIDS. So we come back and uh, I go, all right, let's go. We, we shower up. We have breakfast at Lincoln's Waffle House. Wow. She did a little French toast because I'm like, I got to get some carbs in me. You got to break once a week or so, whatever all the right, fuck. All right. So I have a little toast. I feel good, by the way, reflux wise. We walk to the game. We get there perfectly on time. 12.20 p.m., 12.30 puck drop. Perfect Wait timing. through security. We get through the security. I give them the big physical ticket. Boop. Turns up bright red. Oh, I've been there. I know. It says invalid ticket. And oh. I go, what the fuck? And I go, and, and usually if you print out a ticket or you buy them off a scalp or whatever, StubHub is reputable and it's a physical ticket. Yes, physical. It's a physical tick. It says physical. invalid, red. And I almost walked by anyways because the guy wasn't even paying attention. Yeah. So he goes, these are invalid. He goes, you got to go to the box office. So I go, uh-huh. Jesus Christ, we got to go back through the. We, there's no exit right there because ah. no one's ever exiting. So you got to battle through back through the metal detector and all yeah. these fat fucking Virginia assholes are like, what's up? You're going the wrong way, you uh. fucking. So we leave, we walk all the way around the building, we get to the box office. 
I wait in line. There's a couple in front of us discussing whether or not they should go to the game, how expensive it is. The lady's like, oh, she's drunk. She's like, it's too expensive. And the lady's like, they won the Stanley Cup. Get out of here. Yeah, you're already here. So she leaves. We get up to the window, and I go, hey, I got two tickets. They're coming up invalid. And the lady's like, well, where'd you get the tickets? I was like, StubHub. And she goes, call StubHub. She's a fucking cunt of right course. away. Uh. She goes, call StubHub. And I go, well, what do you mean? Like, the tickets aren't, they're, they're Washington Capitals tickets. They're yes. from the arena. Like, they're from the team. And she's like, you got to call, you got to call StubHub? Call him on StubHub. You got to call StubHub. And I'm like, what? The, lady, the guy told me to come here. The right. ticket. And she goes, what guy? I go, the guy that scanned the tickets. He said, come to the box office. She goes, well, he doesn't know how it works. You got to call StubHub. Next. Oh, I hate a next. And I go, well, well hold on. What if I bought him? I, I changed my mind. I bought him here. Yes. What happens? She goes, you bought him from StubHub. You got to call StubHub. You're wasting my time. Wow. She said, you're wasting my time. You're, you're a work whore. So I go, what the fuck? Oh, okay. So now I'm living. I go, I give her the wave. I walk back. I'm like, maybe I'll try to, because I'm back inside the security. So I'm like, maybe I'll try to scan him here. Maybe it was the guy's scanner. I like that thinking. It scans. Boop. Red. Invalid ticket. Ah. I go, what is going on here? These are clearly real tickets. He goes, the tickets are real. He goes, go to window three. They'll oh, help you. They'll the tell nice, you what's going on. Nice lady. So now I go, why doesn't this lady know about window three? Ah! Uh-huh. I wanted to go back over there and go, you ever hear window three, you fucking piece of garbage? Yeah, you give these coozes one inch of glass, they turn into the Wicked Witch. I fucking hate this lady. I hope someone dumps a bucket of water on her face. Yeah, I'm melting. So I go to window three. Now it's a guy in a suit. This is the season ticket line. Ooh, so this is like the big time. Wee. Now this guy's got a jacket on. He goes, hi, welcome. I go, listen, I bought these tickets. Love a jacket. They're, they're legit Tickets. I got them off StubHub. Physical. They're coming up invalid. And the guy goes, okay, no problem. This happens. Let me see what's going on. He plugs in some shit. He goes, okay, I see what's going on. The seller also had them on Ticketmaster. Because people just put them on all the sites. Yeah. And they must have sold digital tickets. And those cunts got there first. Oh. So they had the cell phone ticket. That they bought off Ticketmaster. Then they mailed me these, even though they mailed them to me three months ago. But they beat me to the game. Ah. So it would have been flipped if we had gotten there a little earlier. So is your seat gone? Yeah, they're in my seat. Ah. Because this asshole, this StubHub account, sold four tickets when they had two tickets. They sold ah. the tickets twice. These people got to get in line. There's too many outside Jews. So this guy goes, you can call StubHub. They'll replace your tickets because they have tic- all kinds of tickets. They'll okay. give you two different tickets. I go... I don't want to call. I want to get in there. The game started. Yes. Like, I'm fucking, I go, do you got two tickets? He goes, I got two season tickets. I can give you season ticket prices, which uh-huh. are discounted because they're season tickets. Okay. If you buy a whole season. He goes, I can give you a little discount. It's right before the game. These are like season ticket resells. We'll give you season ticket prices, 49 bucks each. Now, I paid 180 bucks for my tickets. These tickets, first row of the section. He goes, it's two sections over, but first row, and it'll be cheaper than the tickets you bought. Wow. So I go, lay them on me. I give him the credit card. I'm like, I'll work this out with StubHub later. Sarah's like, no, call Stub. I'm like, fuck it. Let's nah, get in there. It's going to be an hour on hold with some fucking queef in uh, Iran. Exactly. So I give him 100 bucks. I get row A in the second, I mean, balcony. We go up there. Now we have better seats. Yeah, we go. At cheaper money. And I go, at intermission, I'm going to call. We missed a goal, by the way, which I was pissed. They scored ah. two minutes into the game. So at intermission, I go out, I call StubHub, and like we thought, it took about 15 minutes to get through to a guy. He's like, I can't help you. I go, no, someone's helping me. There you go. I go, I bought these tickets. I couldn't get in. And the guy's like, you're in the game now? I'm like, I bought my own tickets, you son of an onion. Yeah, StubHub chub. And he goes, I'll give you to my subordinate, or the higher than a, what's the Superior. opposite? Superior. Superior. Thank you. Yes, Good lake. superior race. So he goes, <laughs> he gets me. A guy from uh, a bigger guy, uh-huh. and the guy goes, I'll tell you what, if we could have switched your tickets, but since you bought your own tickets, Jeez. we'll refund. We're going to refund. Okay, oh, sorry. We're going to refund, Silent refund. The 178 bucks or whatever you spent on those ones, and for your inconvenience, we're going to give you a $35 credit, and I was like, I appreciate that because I did miss the goal. You got to miss the goal. So now we got better seats. There's no one in the row. We have the whole row oh! to ourselves. Front row in the balcony, but front row cheaper tickets. So I got seventy bucks back from the original wow. tickets plus thirty five. Wow! That goes onto my account. And how about this clinker? Clinker already? I go to the show that night, and two guys, two Tuesdays, come and they go. We were thinking outside the box of the gift cards. We got you a StubHub gift card. Oh! I never even heard of a StubHub gift card. I didn't either. I shit right in my pants, took it out, and rubbed it in their head like a little kid. So now I got 85 bucks Woo! towards StubHub. And they're like, we listen to the show. You keep buying four tickets to one game. You're fucking out of your mind. And they go, take 30, take 50 bucks. So I got $85 oh. of the credits to StubHub. And I saved 80 So this seller, and they're like, oh, and they said, we'll reprimand the seller. 
Oh, good, Which good. I'm like, yeah, they should get kicked off. Stuff. They should get suspended for a month, at least, from StubHub. And Reprimand Window 2 twat. Well, that twat, I hope she dies. But then I did a little bit of Buddhism, and I'm like, her <sighs> life is probably miserable. Yeah, her yeah. ass hurts from sitting. Sure. Yada, yada, yada. Pounding. So it all worked out. Great game. And I uh, got really to see Ovechkin, out. the whole thing. But now... I think I the guy with the jacket. That shit drives me crazy. You're wasting my time. Oh. Blow me, gank. He was great, and it's just like, that's how you do service. Yes. Yeah, public service. What do you call it? Not public service. Uh, yeah, customer. Customer service. Yes, you're Serv- on fire today with the word. Service merchandise. Uh, but, all right. So we're at 30 minutes. Woo! I'm going to, it's like, what do you call that when you have an argument? And you, I'm relinquishing back to you, Ooh, your, your honor. Another good word. Also great on hot dogs. Oh, should we read the other ad real oh, quick? Oh, yeah, yeah, ads yeah, yeah, today. Yeah. We're blowing up like the world trade. We're back. Time to get paid. Tower Tower 7. God, I hope this isn't Eero. Uh, Oh, this episode today is also brought to you by Roman. Ooh, I love Roman. Now, the majority of our uh, listeners are are male. Sadly, yes. We're so grateful for the females, though. Love a coos. A lot of hot females. Gash. Well, so all you guys out there, I know there's a lot of you, and I know you're all very similar to us. Talking about erectile dysfunction is not easy. Usually we just brush it off or blame ourselves saying things like, I lost my mojo. Uh Or we avoid it altogether with excuses like, I had a long day at work or sorry, honey, I'm just not feeling it. Yep. But with Roman, it is easy to talk about it with a real doctor who can prescribe real medication. It's simple, safe, and totally discreet. Yes, with Roman, you get a free online evaluation and ongoing care for ED, all from the comfort and privacy of your own home. That's nice. You don't have to tell every Tom, Dick, and Dick about your dick. Two dicks. The doctor will come. The doctor will work with you to find the best treatment plan. If medication is appropriate, they'll ship it right to your house. Free two-day shipping. You get that in two days. That vagina will be still warm. You can enter and penetrate. The whole process is straightforward, simple, and discreet. Get started. It's simple. Go to roman.com slash Tuesdays and complete the online visit. ED can be tough to tackle, but now with Roman, it's very easy. Complete an online visit today and connect with a doctor and take care of it. Just go to roman.com slash Tuesdays to get a free online visit, two-day shipping for free. That's roman.com slash Tuesdays. All right. All right. Now the ads are out of the way. The other business is out of the way. Everybody wants to know. Everyone's on fainted ass or breath mm, or whatever it breath, is. Maybe Queef. yeah, yeah. And now it's it's wild now because I was in D.C. I'm texting you and I can't get all the goods because right. you're there. You're in the moment. Right. We're texting, so it doesn't you know whatever. Yes. But I'll tell you, you were in all of our hearts. Ah. Oh. I'm on stage being like the pizza's happening right now. The show's happening. Oh, something's happening. Oh, wow. I mean, Just it means a lot. Hit us with it. Ah, Stick it up our ass and see if we come. It's so built up. I can't get it up. I got to call Roman. No, I'm kidding. Lot to talk about. Lot to dissect. Please chime. But here it goes. I've got the whole thing mapped out because this is a smorgasbord of emotions. It's a roller coaster of anal. This is all over the place. So, as you know, big date. It Finally comes to sept- uh, November twenty first, twenty second. That that is burned into my brain. You know, every day you go, oh, it's gonna be, a, it's a week away. Oh, it's four days away. Oh, it's three. Here it is, the day of. Thank God we did a pod because I I got out of my head a little. Oh yeah, we did the pod that day. We did the pod that day. That's and, right. And and teased a little, talked about it a little, because you know you get in that head. I'm in the shower just going like. Every Seinfeld reference, every thought, every stand-up, every joke, every July 3rd, everything. It's all coming to a head tonight. Well, that's good because you want to be connected. Yeah, you I was connected. You want to be connected. connected to it, so that's good. But the problem with connecting is you connect to the bad thoughts, too. Right. You know, I can You believe go, your story. Right, right. So you go long. All right, what if I fuck up? What if I forget a word? I mean, all that shit. I'm 12, 13 years in. I fuck up one word. He's going to go, ah, I thought this guy was better. All that shit is playing in your head. And then... But what about the moment, remember in Comedian... We know him so well, it's so crazy. It's crazy. Remember the commentary from Comedian, Orny's saying every word has to be right, and Jerry's like, no, it doesn't. Uh, you got to get that moment in there. I wish I had that moment in my ah, head. I could have helped. That would have helped. That did not play in the noggin. Don't you wish you could have had, like, a, I could have had an earpiece? Oh! Where you're like this, you're doing great. Oh, God. Stop doing... Put your hand down. Yeah. You know, <laughs> something like that. Yeah, yeah, that would have been great. Stop saying reneging. <laughs> Reneging rigged. All right. So 
Here we go. The hour comes. Got to be there at 6.15 or earlier. That's what he said. Jerry wow. comes at 6.35. And this guy, Kevin Doctorman. I don't know if he wants his name out there, but he's his right-hand man. He's been with him since the show, the TV show. Wow. So he's his guy. Cool dude. If he wasn't there, this whole thing would be, I would have been. I would have slipped my wrist by now. Okay. Because he keeps you sane. He keeps you on track. When you start freaking out, he goes, hey, hey, hey. Focus. Yeah, so he must know how much this means. He's very aware. But here's the thing. They know how much it means to a young comic, but they don't realize how nobody's more into Seinfeld than us. I know. It's like, true. nobody. Nobody. Maybe, maybe Donnelly can make a yeah, thing. Gultman's at one of us, you know. But we got the There's show. We got the uh, the hour special and the documentary. Comedians of Cars, the yeah, documentary, plus Comedians the cars. commentary. Yes, we got it all in there. It's, plus, it's, like, I got, like, A&E things up the ass. I got a fucking Barbara Walters <laughs> from 92. Yes, yes, I read his fucking biography. Yes, I gave it to you. you. Yeah. It to me. Sign yeah. language, the yes. whole thing. Read it all. So, by the way, I met a young kid. He's like, I don't know what you're talking about with Seinfeld. He's like, I've never seen the show because our uh, fans are under thirty. Oh, uh, that's horrific. I'm like, you're gonna shit your pants when you see this program. That's torrid. Okay. All right, so here we go. We go up there, and and I got there a little early. I pulled a list, so I said, you know what? I'm gonna go to Chipotle and eat before the big show. Got it. And it was just weird because we've done we've gone there so many times. It's that Upper West Side Chipotle right on 73rd or whatever it is. Every and podcast used to end by us going there. So that, that Chipotle means a lot. So, But it was weird because I'm sitting in a suit. I'm sitting at Chipotle wearing a nice suit with a Rolex on eating a burrito bowl. Wow. It's all very kooky. Everything is surreal. The whole thing, none of it makes sense. We're topsy-turvy. I go up to the Beacon. Weird, sold out. Jerry Seinfeld, like, what the fuck is this? It's cold out. I go, I go right to the back entrance. Hey, I'm Mark. He was Kevin Dockerman's waiting there. Wow. Come on in, buddy. How you doing? Good to see. Hey, New Orleans guy. He must hate the cold. Ah, you know he's doing all that stuff. Super nice guy. We go in. He goes, all right, Jerry will be here in about twenty. Go up, make yourself comfortable. Opens that elevator, old elevator. You know, you hit the ding, and it opens, and then you got to open the cage. I love the cage. Now, that cage was a big part of my weekend because you're just going up and down. You're bored. You know, he's doing his hour. you got to wait for him. You're going up and down. What's going on with the beacon? What's the beacon like? Well, that's the weird thing with opening with these big guys is you have the anticipation of them getting there. Then you're yes. seeing them. Yes. But then you go on stage, and that's nerve-wracking. Then you see them for a moment after. Yes. Then there's that weird hour where they're just gone, and you're right. kind of like, I guess I'll eat some of the snack. Yes. It's strange. That's exactly right. And But then you're like, should I, should I eat? I don't want to eat too much. And Am I that guy? Am I the fat kid? Am I the weirdo? Am I sitting in his seat? Does he want the TV on? You know, it's too much. Right, particularly with him because he's so particular. Exactly. So I go up that elevator, and you're in the elevator, and it's just all sick. Bono, Sting, uh, Black Sabbath, uh, Yanni, you know, everything. Uh, Stevie Wonder, it's all the signatures. So you're just surrounded by, like, history of entertainment. You're like, oh, my God, I'm in this elevator. And brilliance. Brilliance. So I get in the elevator. The guy, it's a little, like, uh, he looks like the guy from Royal Tenenbaums, Bogota. Oh, yeah. Uh, perfect elevator Guy casting, little guy, brown, barely speaks English. Yes, yes, hello. And you try to talk to him. He's like, I don't get anything, you know. <laughs> He's that guy. Because you know when you're you're freaking out, you're trying to relate to any. You're talking to the garbage man, like, hey, listen to this shit. Yes. Well, get get to the moment. You're like, I gotta talk to somebody. Let me get right. the dialogue going. Yes. Like, I'm in that at least yes. for the second. Exactly. So you go up to the seventh floor. <laughs> gate opens. You walk out. Beautiful green room, cool, small, but, you know, decked out, fruit, snacks, tons of bread, all this Jew stuff, like challah bread or whatever that is, and uh, fruit. Money. Yeah, it's all money. And he, uh, I, I sit in there, and I'm just like, I'm just <laughs> freaking out. I'm in my suit, freaking out, like, should I sit like this? Should I sit like that? Yes. Finally, and every minute, it's like you have Spidey sense, or you're on meth. You know, like, every minute is an hour. Right, and you're not you're not bored because you're so freaked out that you're never. I could sit in a, and stare at a wall for thirty minutes, and I wouldn't be bored because the whole time I'm going, he's gonna come. The shows at this time, I gotta do this joke. You have so much swirling around that there's there's no time for boredom. You're freaking out. Big swirls, a lot of swirl. So finally, he comes in, and you're picturing it what it's gonna be like, but it, you can never predict. 
It's amazing. So he comes in. He's got the, the, the suit on, and he goes, oh, man, here you go. How you doing, man? Good to see you. All right, what do we got, two tonight? Man, my wife is, uh, and you're like, oh, this, I'm in it. This it's is happening. It. So he shows up in the suit. Shows up in the suit. Wow, that surprised me. Yeah, and he's like, uh, yeah, yeah, my wife had a big dinner party. Ooh, lucky to get out of there. I was like, oh, yeah. yeah. And then you're like, hey, hey, snap out of it. You're just going like, you want to just stare at him like it's a, it's a zoo. Now, hold on. So what kind of greeting? Was there any greeting? Was Good he like, greeting. hey, Mark? What's up, Mark? Yes. Did, he, did he say? Did he say Mark? He says Mark. Wow, he said I know, Mark. I know. I love when he says my name, which sounds so gay. <laughs> That's so crazy. It's crazy. And he's like, "Hey, Kev." And Kevin's like, "How you doing, boss?" He calls him boss. It's cool. It's crazy to me because he's in the car anticipating seeing you. I know. Like in his mind, he's like, "All right, Mark Norman's there. I'll say hi to Mark." Yeah, exactly. It's so wild. But he's got a lot on his mind, and he's like, "Ah, Netflix." And you know, he's taking the jacket. He's undoing his tie. You know, he's got business. He's dealing with. He's he's a megalom. What do you call it? A a, a mo. Mogul. He's a mogul. Oh, he's an icon. An icon. icon and a mogul. American icon. Iconic mogul. Yes. Doesn't it feel like these guys, when you first work with them, if he pulled his dick out, you just start blowing them? No. If he was like, suck my dick a little bit. You'd Question. be like, all right. You could leave the door open. We could, we could film it. I'd still blow them. Yeah, you just kind of be like, all right. I guess. Which, by the way, this is how it happens in real I life. Know, on a serious note, the wine signs and of, such. You'd be like, of course. Right, I guess I'll blow them. Yeah, the power. It, it, it oozes off of it. And, but he's so normal. He's so one of us. He's just like, the first five minutes, as I say, I'm shitting myself, and then it's completely normal. Yeah, you settle in. He's you a guy. settle. But then you feel guilty about it. How am I settling? Am I a sociopath? Why am I not freaking out again? You're like, oh, because just that's how life works. Everything becomes a norm. No, he's a guy. Well, a McDonald. He's a, he's a guy, and it's like he <laughs> talked about his quote. It was like, when you meet a comedian, you go through 10,000 things. So you have right. 10,000 things in common right, right away. Right, yes. So I'm quelling... Doing Seinfeld, I'm quelling, going yada, yada, yada. I mean, it's all, I'm sitting on all of it. Right. And uh, so we talk, we, we were having a good time, and Kevin goes, oh, yeah, you about to, uh, yeah, you got to go on in like five. So I'm like, all right, let's go down. And I, I'm in the elevator, goes, yeah, I'm doing my special. And he starts talking to me from his green room across the hall into the elevator. I'm sitting there with Bogota. So he's and, not taking the elevator with you. He's no, no. staying behind. He's doing his shit. He's got... 15 minutes or whatever, 20 minutes till he comes on. Now, is there a monitor that he can see and hear yes. you? Yes. Oh. Hey, the monitor. But it was off when I left. So I remember I just kept telling, hey, maybe it's still off. Man, okay. You just got to go with it because he'll freak out. So uh, we're talking about specials. He's like, you watch that guy? Oh, yeah, that one's pretty good. Blah, blah, blah. We're and now I'm kind of like thinking, I got to go, man. Like, this is your show. But it's a weird dynamic because you're like, I, he got into it. Right, and right. I'm like, I got to go now. So that's fun. I've had that with Louie, too. Where you're like, I kind of got to get in, ready to yeah, go here. Yeah, and it's yeah. like, I, it's your show. I want to do well I'm gonna for you. I want to fuck up your show. Exactly. So uh, Kevin's like, hey, we got to go. We got to go. But it felt good. Like, he wanted to talk so much that it was almost making me late. So right. that was exciting. So it's the little things like that that keep you going. It's it's not really like a, you think he's going to get you in a headlock and noogie you. It's those things. Right. But you got to connect to the fact that he wants you there. So yes. He already likes you. You got to keep being like, it's like, I feel like, like wait, my marriage. I'm like, she committed. <laughs> she likes me. She likes me. Right. You know, you right. have to be like, he's he's a fan. Right. Yeah. But, you know, we don't let that. We It's hard to sink. You can't pierce this wall of insecurity it's we have. very strong. Strong wall. It's like um, someone Formal. just said this. At the meeting I was at, where it's like your wall. brain, the the function of the brain is to solve problems. Sure. So if there's no problem, your brain creates a problem ah, to solve. Here, here. So your brain is like, this is your mind and soul is like, this is amazing. Your brain's like, wait, we got to figure something out. Yeah. Well, he might hate you. Right. How do we figure out? What do we do? How do we handle him hating us? Yes. And so you're like, all right, what should I do? Come on, brain. That's exactly right. And he doesn't hate you. You're just, uh, you got a dumb gay brain. Which I think is also why these artists and geniuses are all so fucking depressed and weirdo and, and like to fuck kids or whatever they like. Michael Jackson or Steve Jobs, they're all assholes. Because they got too much thinking. Yeah, there's a lot cooking up there. Yeah, so they're just eating their own bullshit. But also, by the way, their, their parents were probably horrible. Sure, like Michael's sure. dad beat the snot out of them. That's true. That's true. But uh, so, all right, I get down that elevator gate closed. We go down. And I'm like, oh, you know, you're kind of freaking out in the elevator a little. Like, not only am I about, about to do a, a sold out beacon, but I just talked to Jerry Seinfeld in his green room. I've made it. Yeah, and then you also have the moment that you haven't been thinking about your set because you've been talking I know, to him. I know. So now you're like, oh shit, I got to do a show. Yeah, yeah. And you can still eat it. I, of course. Every show you do, there's still a chance that you fucking eat it. Completely. 
And uh, yeah, the whole thing's kooky. I'm wearing. I'm, I, well, I went to Cole Hahn about a couple hours before. Oh, I got Cole Hahn. A good, good shoe. That's my shoe. Yeah. Oh, you like a Cole? Well, that's where I got my shoe for Letterman. I just happened to get it. I'm ah. not like a Cole Hahn guy, but that's where it ended up getting the shoe. Yeah, they're good. He, Hell of a shoe. He goes, "That's a good looking shoe." I go, hey, "They're on oh, sale." Yeah, that feels good. That feels good. It all feels good. So. Uh, I go downstairs and they do a little, you know, I meet all the grips. I'm a big grip guy. I love a grip. I know. It feels good because they're regular people. They're regular. I'm a regular. So I feel connected more to them than I do to him, obviously. Sure. Both but you're a lot closer to that guy than you are to Seinfeld. <laughs> exactly. So I'm hanging out with the grips. We're chitting. We're chatting. Super nice guy. Salt of the earth. And so uh, Kevin goes out there, or he goes on a little god mic. He's got his, uh, what do you call that, little uh, sheet music thing. Oh, uh, music stand. Thank you. And he's got all my shit on it. He's like, ladies and gentlemen, blah, blah, you ready to see Jerry sign? Woo! You know. And then, and then he goes, all right, we got a special guest, uh, one of Jerry's faves or whatever. Nice. Uh, Might have seen him on a late night circuit or his comedy set. Mark Norman. I go out there and uh, I just, you know, I stand there and I deliver and it goes well. I got the girlfriend there. I got the agent there. I got friends there, whatever. And uh, it goes well. It goes okay, good. Okay, that's good. And remember, oh. 15 minutes, no clock, no light. And Kevin kept going, don't go short. And if you got to go long, at least stop at 17. Okay. Any, anywhere from 15 to 17 is where you want to be. Yeah, that's important to explain because we know that from Ryan Hamilton. Right. But I don't know that our audience knows this. Exactly. That's very, he's very particular. He doesn't have a clock on the stage. Right. And in comedy, normally there's a light at some point to let you know. Yeah. Or there's a, you know, there's a clock on the thing. Yeah. And he doesn't want you looking at your watch either. Right. He's very particular. Very particular. So I, in my apartment after you left, by the way, after the pod, I just went back and forth, iPhone, timer set, stopwatch set, just set it over and over, pausing for laugh, hopefully. Right. And it came out to about 16. Okay. So I was like, all right, I think I'm, I'm with it. I did that about, you know, 50 times. Sure. So go out there, goes well, do a callback at the end, boom, bing, bow, thanks a lot. I come off, he's standing there, lights go out. Ooh. Lights go back up, and he just runs out. Right. And he goes right into it. I mean, he's just like, can you believe these fucking phones? He doesn't say, can you believe these phones? And they're just, ah, they're dying right away. Wow. He doesn't give them any, no, how you doing, folks? How we doing? About? Nothing. Right. Boom. And the act is tight as a drum. It's years and years. It's like Louis said with the samurai sword, just banged away. Mm -hmm. Smooth, killer, lights out, a million jokes where you're like, oh, that's brilliant. Oh, how do you come up with that? Oh, and I went... I had my big moment. I'm like, I'm, I did my part. It went well. Right. And I walk behind the curtain curtain, like the last curtain. Sure. He's on stage. There's a curtain. I'm behind that just going, ah, ah, I'm here. I did that. He's on stage. I opened. I'm, 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 you know, the whole thing. Well, that's always crazy, too, because I've had that before where you're like, I'm on the same stage as yes. him right now. Yes, exactly. Like, there's a curtain there. Yes. But you're standing on the stage. Yeah, completely. Like you're just behind him. There's a curtain, whatever you call it, protecting you. Right. But you're standing on stage at the same time as Jerry Seinfeld. I mean, if we got tickets to that show, it'd be fun. I'm right, back right. Behind the curtain, I'm, I'm, I'm ten feet away from the right. guy. Right, we'll be hearing, pushing each other in the bushes. Yes, I'm hearing uh, what's the deal with, and phones are weird, and all. I'm like, oh my god, I'm, I'm in it, babe. I'm in the womb. Insane. Insane. So that was the first show. Uh, I watched the whole thing. I'm sitting there with a chair, just like you know, listening. I want to hear the hour. And uh, he gets off. He goes, "All right, all right, here we go." We get in the elevator together. Wow. We go up. We talk about the set. And I go, I, "This is when I go real comedy mode." I'm like, "Didn't I, you you say Iraq? Now you say Afghanistan." He's like, "Afghanistan hits harder." I'm like, "Oh, huh. he's like, you knew about Iraq?" I'm like, "Yeah, yeah, I know the act." And That's always exciting. So he knows that I'm a fucking dork. Right. I'm in there. But he loves it. He loves it because he's a dork. Sure. And we start talking about acts, and he's like, everybody's hip now. Enough with hip. Everybody's trying to be interesting, and it's a victim off. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. And he's like, you're not hip. I'm like, I'm not hip. He's like, I'm not hip either. No <laughs> hip. Love love not <clears throat> being hip. Fuck hip. Funny is hip. Hip stinks. Well, you know, be, be Look hip. Look at socks. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Look at that ankle. <laughs> ankle porn. So, uh. Patreon. Now I'm riding high. Set went well. Hang is going well. We're laughing. The, the jackets are off. The sleeves are rolled up. We got a we got a half an hour at forty five till the next show starts. I'm eating fruit. I'm eating almonds. I got a coffee going. I picture you like George with Tony. Yes, I was Tony. <laughs> You're I Tony. Was totally George. 
So we're having a great time. I can't remember what we talked about because it was all a whirlwind. Second show. I got this. I've done it before. Easy peasy. Go up. Killing. You know, first of all, go down the elevator. Go on stage. I got the whole thing down. Killing. Better set. Better set now because I'm a little looser. And a better crowd, I'm sure. A little late, bit better. It's better nine, right? It, it, Seven and nine? Seven and nine thirty. Okay, nine thirty is nice. Nine thirty is very nice, but it's all Jews out there. It's all yarmulkes, as far as the eye can see. <laughs> right, right. And uh, so, whatever. Do my closer. Get off. Come backstage, or you know, side stage. Nobody there. No Kevin. No Seinfeld. What? And I go, ah, it Wait. Just... So you say good night. You come off, and Jerry's not there. Not there. Oh my God! I'm freaking out. I- I've I've ruined it. Everything is ruined. It's all for naught. All of it, all the goodwill, the good set, the good hang. Shit, he liked my shoes. I don't understand. Shoes. So what do you do? So you come off, there's no one. There's like a grip or there's something? There's a grip like playing a ching, 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 ching on his phone. There's like noises so coming at, off his phone. At what moment walking back do you see no one there? Like are you still on stage where you're like, wait, what? No, 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 because it's so dark. So you're kind of like, you have almost have to get a, a, an inch away from a guy. Okay. And I get back there and I'm like, huh, huh. And I do like the Belushi, you know, uh, sidestep. Like, what the fuck? And I go, what do I do? What do oh I do? Oh, my I'm, I'm, God. I'm in a panic. Like, this is no joke, no fun time like what the fuck do i oh, you know like oh like, my I hit the wrong god on the my nukes. heart is pounding oh it's crazy so uh, i was like what do i and one guy you know these guys don't give a fuck they got he's got like a match in his mouth he's eating a a, a blueberry muffin he goes yeah you better go back out there what that's what he says he goes you better go back out there and i go all right and i run back out and i go hey folks you did an encore i had to i didn't know what to do i panicked oh my god a seinfeld open encore so i run out there and i go uh, hey folks well and they know. They're like, oh, boy. Like, they can feel it. This Holy is awkward. Holy shit. And they go, uh, I go, well, uh, I probably won't be uh, working here again. And oh that gets a big God. laugh. And then I go, because I'm like, do I do a bit? Do I do two? Do I go? So I do two bits. And in the second bit, some guy in the back's going, Jerry. What? Jerry. He's pulled the Daryl Strawberry move Oh, my me. God. So I'm like, ah. So I I, I want to go. Hey, fuck you, you chooch! Get out of here. He he wasn't back there, but I'm, I can't do that. You know, I can't even curse. So I just plow through, and I go big joke at the end, and I just run back off. Lights go out again, and he's there, and he just blows past me. Like I don't even want to look at you. Oh ass. my god! I was like, ah, I'm, I'm maybe you didn't know. Oh no, I've upset the king. Oh he my can feel god! It. And so I go up to Kevin. I go, Kev, big daddy, talk to me. He goes, he goes. Oh, oh, this is bad. This is bad. What happened? What happened? He's doing the what happened. I'm like, I did the same set, same jokes. And he's like, oh, this is bad. He wasn't here. He's like, look, just deal. You got to figure this out, but I, I got to do my thing now. He he puts his headset on. He's doing stuff. He's on a laptop. See, this is what upsets me. It's like, why can't you just have a light? Just have a system. Ah, it's crazy. Just have a clock. Have someone in the back. Give you a little light. Have a digital clock so yep. we don't fuck up. Also, just be down here. I know. I know you're the best. You're the greatest. The show, the whole thing. I mean, I'd blow him for fun on a Tuesday, but it's yeah. like, just help me out. Yeah. I think in a weird, sick way, it's a test. It sounds testy. Something's and up. I hate tests. Hate a testies. Don't like a test. Hate a quiz. The whole thing. Yeah, pop. So I am just ruined. I'm up. I go up in the elevator, and I go, oh, man. I'm trying. I'm talking to Bogota again. He doesn't know what I'm saying. I go... Oh, what happened? Did he look pissed? He goes, oh, yes, pissed, pissed. I go, oh! Oh, Bogota! Even he knew. Come on, Bogota. Well, he probably in the elevator going, what the fuck's this piece of shit doing? Yeah, I think What the fuck are you doing, you little piece of shit? (laughs) (laughs) Reference. I think think he was banging the walls, and they're like, is he getting off? Is he getting off? Dr. Ben, Kevin, he goes, he saw you run back out, and he was like, what the fuck is he doing? He was furious about the run back out, because I made an executive decision. It was all wrong. I wonder if part of it was charming to him. Mm. Then he's like, oh, that's sweet. He's going back out there. Like, what a neat little dumb dumb. Like, kind of like, oh, he's uh, clueless. He's trying. Uh-huh. Sweet. Because I'll tell you, I've had this feeling twice yeah. in my career. I've done the exact same thing twice, but not with Jerry Seinfeld. Once sure. it was with Gullman in Minneapolis, and it was like that where I said goodnight. I was like, here he comes, Gary Gullman. And I introduced him yeah. and walked off, and I walked all the way upstairs, and he was like, what the fuck are you doing here? Yes. And I was like, I brought you on. And he's like, what? But he wasn't so pissed. And then and I did a practical joke. It was at Radio City Music Hall. Oh. I came off, and they, were, they weren't even there also. And oh. the guy was like, what are you doing? That's a big it's one. It's a horrible feeling because in your head, well, you did the right time. But in my head, I, I was like, going short is better than going long. Sure. Because everyone wants to see them, so i got to get out of here. Right. 
But doing it with Jerry makes my like I feel nauseous uh, hearing about it. I can't even. I mean, we're squeamish, squirrely weirdos already. After this, because our whole thing, we talked about it. You go that clock. Aren't you worried about the time? And I was like, of course I'm worried about the time. And it happened. Oh the, my the god! The thing we were the most worried about happened. And I just like, should I walk around the block? Should I? You, you can't sit down, you know. So I'm in the green room, just pacing, pacing. Like, what do I do? I'm I'm pretty much thinking like, okay, I fucked up. He gave me a shot. The biggest guy in comedy gave me a shot, and I blew it. I fucking blew it. I don't think I'll be working tomorrow. I think I'll figure something out. And if he does let me work tomorrow, it'll be awkward, and he'll never see me again. Okay. Kind of thing. That's where my head's at. So I want to talk to Kevin so bad, but he's busy. So I don't want to bother Kev. So I, I, I go back down the elevator. King, king, king. There goes the, the gate. Go back down, Bogota. He uh, gave me the bad news, and I go up to Kevin one more time. He's got a headset on. He's, like, doing shit, and I go, what do you think I should do? He goes, this is what you do, and he's pissed. All right? He's like, stop bothering me a little bit. Right. But I had to know. I had to get some information. He goes, he saw you go back out there. That was bad. I've never seen that before. I've been working with him. No one's ever done that. I go, oh, <laughs> shit. You don't want to be original in a bad Ooh, way. Yes. You know? So I go, oh, fuck. All right, and he goes, He's probably going to say something, and after he does, don't bring it up again, ever. And I go, done. Wow. So I just sat there and waited and waited and waited. He comes off. He kills, thank God. Comes off, and he goes right up to me and walks right by me. And I go, ah. Oh, boy. And the the, the the standard procedure is he comes off. We all follow him. We go up the elevator together and yuck it up. Okay. So now the second show is over. He comes off, and I'm following him, and he just turns abruptly and goes, hey. Dead eye contact. And he goes, you're all right. But wow. don't ever go on stage. Don't ever go back on stage again. Ever. Like drill sergeant. Wow. Ever. And I was like, oh, I mean, dad, angry dad, finger in the face. Don't ever go back on stage. Oh, my ever. God. And I go, won't happen again. So sorry. I fucked up. And he goes, all right. Got in his SUV and drove home. Well, it is weird because they're expecting him now, and then you come back out again. Of course. It's like an encore. It's very bizarre. Yes, and some Long Island cunt yelled, Jerry. I mean, I'm already fucking up. Now you, now he's heckling me, what we're all thinking. I mean, it was it was like my own brain was talking. Oh, jeez. Oh, the whole thing. So I go home. The, I come back to the lady. I pour everything out on her. She's like, oh, boy, that's wild. I stayed up till 5 in the morning sitting here just going head in hands like, fuck, Fuck, you know, when you want to replay time, all you want to do is tr turn back time. If I could turn, turn back, back time. time. That's all you want to do. All right, I got to wrap this thing up. So uh, freaking out, go to bed. I drug myself. I go to bed. I wake up the next day, and I'm like, hey, it's a new day. It's a new life. I get uh, breakfast with the gal or whatever. No, I don't. It's it's uh, it's a Friday. So and she's he's at work. He said you're all right. He said I'm all right. So that's something. I mean, that was nice of him. Yes, that was nice. Because he could have let you fester. He's like, you're all right. Don't worry. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank God he had a good set. So whatever. I wake up the next day at like noon. Okay. I, I stayed up so late. Wake mm -hmm. up the next day at noon. I look at my phone. Text from him. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> this could go either way. The text is from 11. I look at my phone at noon. So I'm already like, oh, shit. Holy I've been answering shit. for an hour. Somehow the text from Seinfeld is Bigger than all of this to me. Well, that's personal. I mean, that's so insane to me. Being a green room is like you got a gig, right? We got work. But like, he's like, let me reach out to, him. let me text Mark. Yeah. I mean, that to me is like the most mind blowing. It's you weird how little point. things end up being like, what? That's that's a good point. It's yeah. so weird to me. So I open the text uh, hesitantly, hesitantly. Sure. Okay. Hesitantly. With, with some hesitation. Thank you. And uh, it says, check this out. And it's a uh, video of a car guy. And I go, oh! Now that's huge. Huge. Because now you're equals. Now we're equals. So I write, oh, I watched the whole video. Like, like it's homework. I watch it right away. I don't, I don't really give a shit about the video. Right. But I watch it, and I go, oh, this guy's great. He goes, I love this guy. I go, oh, yeah, yeah. And I sent him a video, and he goes, uh... All right, uh, how, how is it? I, I'm busy, but how is the video? I go, oh, it's great, it's great. And he goes, see you tonight. And I go, great. Turns out he was doing reshoots at the Beacon for his Netflix special. Wow. So he was doing stuff and texting me. That's unbelievable. So already I feel way better. I'm back in the mix a little bit here. All right. I fucked up, but he doesn't. he's not thinking about it. He's busy. He's gay. The whole thing. So show back up. I get there at 5.58. Okay. I ain't fucking around. I see Kev. We don't bring it up. 
I go in the green room. I just stare at my notes. I'm just studying. I'm not. I'm not pulling a phone. I don't feel like I earned a phone. Yet, right. No know? phone. No phone. No nothing. He comes in six thirty five. Right on the dot. I heard that. Elevator gate open. Oh, the, I can hear the cage. Yes. I know the, the cage sound. Squeaky metal. Yes. You know? He comes in and he goes, hey, what's shaking, Norman? All right, whatever, you know. And I'm like, puts his jacket on the hanger as he always does. And he goes, uh, can we talk about comedy? Can we talk about your act? Oh, my and I go, God. Yes, sir. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm a private. You're the colonel, of course. Whatever you want. I'll do push-ups. Sure. So he goes, uh, all right. You don't move at all up there. You're not moving. And I go, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm a, I'm a joke guy. I just I don't want to fuck around. I just want to get the words out. He goes, that's no good. You're all words. Who cares? He's like, "Get." it's a theater. It's a giant stage. He's like, look at that stage. Point of the TV. Look at that stage. That's a big-ass stage. I go, yeah, yeah, it is. He goes, use it. Use it. You have no domination up there. You got to dominate. Oh, I'm like, oh I'd love wow. to be dominated. I don't dominate. I'm not a dominator. I want to eat my own cum. Yeah. So I'm like, all right, all right, fair enough. Yeah. I'm like, I do, I do move around in the, the clubs a little. He's like, really? Okay. Well, just apply it and, and do it bigger here. And I'm like, yeah. And he's like, big movements. It's a theater. And I go, yeah, yeah. Okay, got it. This is a huge, colossal understanding. Big. Yeah. <laughs> uh. So and then he goes. uh, you do a little giggle after your your jokes, and I go uh, the giggle. Yeah, I hate the giggle. I know about the giggle. I hate the giggle. The giggle's a tick. And he goes, "Oh, good." I go, I, "I'm not laughing at my own." Oh, he goes, "Oh, thank God. I thought you were one of those laugh at your own joke guys." I'm like, "No, no, no, no. The giggle is a is a is a bad thing. I hate it. I'm working on it." He goes, oh, "Okay, great." So then he tells me something else that wasn't, you know, like you got a booger or something, <laughs> and so. That was fine. And I think that that was kind of like my little punishment. Right, right. Like a been, little reprimandation. And we were closer after that. It almost was a good thing. Sure, yeah. You know, you know, sometimes you fight with a guy and now you're closer. Yeah, yeah. It yeah, felt yeah. like that. And now we're having way more fun. Now I'm looser. He's looser. Doctorman is out. He's like, oh, I'm letting these guys roll. Oh, we were in it. love when the doctor leaves. Get that doctor out of I here. I don't have health insurance, you son of a bitch. Yeah. Give me Jerry to myself. <laughs> Go to Canada. So... Uh, hey, set, set, hey, doc, hey, you're up, Norman. All right, cling, 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 door opens. I go down the elevator, and I go, all right. He said, move around. He said, lose the thing. Okay, lose the giggle. I go out there, and I, Chris Rocket. Hey, you fucking faggots, how you doing? All right, here we are. I'm on one side, I'm on the other. I, I'm whipping the mic cord. I'm kicking, I'm cacking. I'm doing all that. I'm can-canning. I'm doing one of these for all the bits, you know? And I'm killing! Kill. Wow. He was right. Everything he said, I applied, and he was right. Wow. Killing. I ended up doing longer because, you know, you're hitting harder, so right. the laughs are longer. Best show of the week? No. Oh, so, holy tits. Get off stage. He's there. Thank Jesus. Right. And uh, he's there, and he goes, good set, Mark. Very good set. And he walks on. I was like, ah, there's nothing better. You're back. Boy, the ups and downs, oh, strikes and gutters. You have no idea. Unreal. I got some idea. You're telling me. I mean, but the feeling. It's, I it's see. something, man. Holy hell. And then Kevin, he's doing this one. Oh, oh all right, Kev. That? I wasn't sure about Kev. Oh, good. Uh, he's to get the good intent. Kev is good. So I'm trying to push through here. So he goes, uh, he goes, uh, wow, that was night and day. I, he's like, I thought you sucked. I was like, <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, Kevin in hell. I did suck, but now I'm loose. I'm being more me. I, I walk out. Oh, also, a guy's phone rang in the show. Oh, P.U. What is that? Why doesn't he use you? Yonder. They should all be using the yonder. I, I mentioned the yonder. Well, they're old fashioned. He didn't even know what yonder was. The yonder years. Yes. So, <laughs> but I, I had a moment of like, oh shit, a guy's phone's ringing. I got to handle this. So I go, what the hell's going on here? And I pulled a Jerry. I go, how big do you have to be? We're at a Jerry Seinfeld sold out beacon. There's still this douche, and it's killing. Wow. Like there's one at every party. You're ruining this. This is all I got. You know, I, I went in on the guy. Sure. Which actually uses a good minute. You know. Yeah. Why not? So, so now, now I'm definitely in the clear time wise. So I come off, good set, good set. He goes out there, rips it, wraps it, comes back out, great hang upstairs, hanging out, having a good time. It's all forgotten. Under the anal. So second show, took his advice again, killed, killed. Wow. Come off, and he goes, I love that porn joke. Now we're doing, all right. doing compliments about the act. So uh, he goes out there, and he, that was the set of the night, or set of my night, then he goes out and murders, and we were all going, ah, oh, late show, here we go, and they were great. Wow. And uh, so he comes off, and Kevin goes, he's going to sign a few autographs, 
Then we're going to get into the SUV. SUV. You sit in behind the driver. He's going to sit behind the passenger. I'm going to sit in the front seat. I go, yes, sir. Once again, in the car is like a bigger deal to oh. me. Because the rest of it's gig. Yes. That's a gig. You got a gig. It's exciting. It's thrilling. You're in the green room. Of course you're in the green room. You're, you're doing the gig. Right. But the car and the text, that's where it's like... Uh, Mind blowing. My mind, mind is blown. Blowing. You're in the car with you got seatbelts on. We're sitting this far away. Oh my We're god. We're driving through Manhattan. I'm, I'm looking at him. He's going, ah, oh, can you believe that thing? And that guy got a special and he stinks and all. I'm like, yeah, yeah, crazy. And we're laughing. I go, remember that one bit you had about the guy with the the the, can, the cannonball? And he's like, oh, yeah, wow. I was like, that's a good bit. And he tells a bit, and it kills in the car with wow. the driver and the other guy, Kevin. So we're, hang, we're hanging out. He made fun of Rock a little bit, which was classic. That's and uh, we pull up to this tiny hole in the wall on 9th Avenue right by uh, Port Authority. Mm. Capizio or something like that. Old okay. Italian. It looks like something out of like the Godfather when they go to Sicily. Sure. And uh, the guy goes, he's got the chef hat, mustard. Hello, Mr. Mr. Jerry, come on, we got your table. He goes, ah, Benicio, good to be here. He's loose, we're loose, the work is done. He wouldn't let me eat all night. He wouldn't let me, he's like, don't eat, don't eat. I'm like, I'm having an almond. He's like, put that almond down. Oh my God, all I can think about is my keto diet with the oh, reflux. I'd have to be like, I can't God. eat sugar, I can't oh, eat sauce, geez. I can't eat after nine. Oh, that would have been bad. Yeah, I'd be like, give me some almonds and a slice of turkey. Oh, because he goes, is there anything you can't eat? And I go, I can eat everything. He goes, good. Oh, my God. So that would have been ugly. Oh, jeez. But you sit down, there's the antipasta with the cheese and the mushrooms and the, the different the port de jule or whatever the hell you call it. Uh, cap- what do you call that meat? The thin? Oh, prosciutto. Prosciutto! Yes. So we sit down, we, and he pours the red wine, and uh, we just chat it up. And he gets a little... Toasty, oh, really? if I don't mind saying. No. And that's when it really the sleeves came up, and we're 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 zinging and zanging so much that Kev had to pull back, and he went and got a photo. Got a photo. Got a couple because we were in it. Boy, Kev's good. Kev is good. You Love came around on Kev. Kev. Love the Kev. Love Kev. He I mean, he's taking the photo. Night. That's did he text you the photo? Oh yeah. Wow, good Kev. I'm gonna send him a fruit basket. That a boy, Kev. Basket case. He doesn't need your fruit. Nah, he's doing fine. So yeah. That was it. We leave. I'm a little tipsy myself. We get out of there. We shake all the cooks' hands because they killed it. He does. He did one thing. He's like, something's missing. And the guy's like, what? What? You know, the chef's on on his heels. Like, what? 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 And he goes, this isn't cheesy enough. I want a commercial. I want a. Oh, and the guy wow. goes, I got you, Jerry. I got you. He goes back, makes a cheese pizza in like eight seconds. Oh Comes my back god. Back out. Jerry eats the cheese. We leave. <laughs> They kind of throw us out a little bit. Jerry eats the cheese. Well, we're having That's s- a shirt right there. <laughs> I mean, Jerry eats the cheese is a beauty. I'm not going to give away any nuggets because I don't know what he wants out there, but I will say he kept putting his head in his hand going, all it's about is killing. You see that? You see that? Everybody goes, oh, you don't have any new material. Oh, it takes you forever to write new material. I'm killing. Killing. They're all going to tell their friends word of mouth is the best thing, blah, 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 blah. Wow. He's like, I don't do social media. I don't do any of that shit. Killing, and he goes, killing equals cash. And he's like pounding the table. Killing equals cash. And I go, yeah, yeah. And the whole time I'm just going, remain eye contact, keep eye contact, because I'm so bad at eye contact, but I don't want to let him know I'm a fucking lunatic. Sure. So we get out of there. We're on the sidewalk. It's freezing out. I'm in a suit, no jacket. I don't have time to feel cold. And he goes, you going to be all right? And the guy swings his door open. I go, don't worry about me. And he goes, Let's do it again. Wow! And let's go, do it again. Well, you got that right. Jerry eats the cheese. Yes. Oh he loves boy. The cheese. He now loves what do you, the slop. You walk home. You bike home. What happens? I walk right down to that A subway. I uh, take my Rolex off and I put it in my shirt pocket. Yeah, you that better. He's dingling and dangling in the in the light. Oh, at that point, you could throw it in the tracks. Who gives a shit? That's true. You could burn it all down now. You got that right. And I I wait for that. Uh, oh, twelve minutes for the C. What do I give a shit? I got all the time in the world. Certainly. So I meet the lady, we go out and get smashed, and we just get shit house, and we wake up at 2 the next day, and I'm wildly hungover, and it was all worth it. Wow, boy. Oh, fun laugh I got out of him. At the end of the night, I uh, last show, I go, oh, where can I set up my merch? Oh, that's he fun. He fucking lost it. Oh, that's he fun. Lost it. Love a good merch bit. I love a bit, too, where he goes like, oh, yeah, there's like, what are you, crazy? Oh, right, he's joking, right. yeah. 
Oh, so, that's good stuff. That was fun. So, wow. What for a tale. What we, a week. Thank you. What Unbelievable. A, what a pod. Tell your friends. And we got we got shirts. And sign up for the Patreon, for God's sakes. I mean, we're gonna, we got some extras up there. A lot of new Patreon. Oh, yeah. All the live eps are on there. And, uh, and, and killing equals cash. I mean, how about forking a little over for PBS? <laughs> um, yes, yes. Pussy, bitch, and slut here. Uh, I'm up to... 48 sci-fi references on this episode alone. Oh, yeah. Uh, so get on the Patreon. Uh, we got to wrap it up here, I guess. Laugh Boston this weekend for me. Big. And then Portland on Sunday. People keep asking me if I'm at Portland. Yes, Empire Comedy Club or Empire Rock Club. Ooh. This Sunday, Portland, Maine, one of my favorite cities, Laugh Boston. Come to the early show Saturday or Friday. And then uh, next week, Cleveland Hilarities. They're giving me a nice guarantee. I'm so scared no one's going to come. So please tell some friends. The weekend after that is New Mexico, December 13th and 14th. And then the weekend after that is uh, Lafayette on Ooh. Friday, Houston on Saturday, I think, the 20th and 21st. Lafayette in Houston. Nice. Get your tickets to that and uh, check out the Instagrams. Yeah. Jealous Comedy. Got a bunch of clips on there. Give a nice comment, algorithm. Share the clips. Spread it around. Herpes. Suck your own dick and... Buy a shirt. We got new shirt. What's the new one called? Merch dick? It's podcastmerch.com. Thank you. Dot com. We got new shirts up there. They're killer. And uh, and if you don't get your shirt, text Lewis. I know you got to go. <clears throat> I do. All right. I'm in Jersey in some place called Medford. Uh, Santa Ana, we're doing that. By the way, we never did. We didn't do one Seinfeld reference the day of the show. Isn't that? I feel like it's almost kind of a right? subconscious little. Weird. I mean, I could be wrong, but if you. I, bet there's one in I didn't somewhere. hear one. All right. I'm at the Blue Room. That'll That's a nice, fun room in Missouri. Then I'm in Portland, Oregon after that. And then Punchline San Francisco, that's a small room, but I love it. Yuck yucks in Vancouver, folks. Always Canucks. about the Vancouver. Tampa Side Splitters. Uh, La Jolla Comedy Store. Gotham Comedy Club. Oh, I go, hey, I'm doing Gotham. He goes, I'll come by. Oh, wow. So that'll be fun. Dude. That's exciting. That's insane. St. Louis. Uh, Zanies in Nashville, Atlanta. Uh, all kinds of stuff. What else we got here? That'll about do. Moon Tower. Both of us are doing a live pod. Moon Tower. And uh, Chicago in May. And uh, yeah, buy a shirt. I got shirts. We got shirts. Patreon's cooking. Praise Allah. Blow yourself. And uh, yeah. We'll see you next what week. What episode? It's going to be hard to follow this one. Jerry eats the cheese. Where can I sell merch? <laughs> <laughs>